Hi, I'm Joseph Rand with HomeBuyerTaxCredit.com, your leading resource for information about the HomeBuyer Tax Credit. Uh, on our site, we get questions all the time asking, am I eligible for the tax credit? So we wanted to put together a video which reviews the 10 basic criteria for eligibility uh, under the HomeBuyer Tax Credit. But this only applies if you are closing on your property after November 6, 2009. If you closed on a property prior to November 6, 2009 or on November 6, 2009, different eligibility requirements apply to you. Go check our site. Uh, we have the eligibility requirements for all the older versions of the tax credit. But let's go over the top 10 requirements uh, and we're going to review them in the order that the easiest to the hardest. So first, uh, you have to be 18 years or older and not a dependent on someone else's tax return. Fairly straightforward. Now just note uh, that is measured at the time that you close. So you have to be 18 at the time you closed. If you turn 18 sometime later in 2010, you're not going to be eligible. Also, with regard to being a dependent on someone else's tax return, the purpose of this is to prevent people from getting the tax credit for underage children. Uh, under the old tax credits, uh, people were buying a home in the name of their five-year-olds and getting a tax credit. The government doesn't want to have that happen. Uh, so you can't be under 18, you can't be a dependent, uh, but just note, if you were a dependent on, say, your parents' tax return for 2009, uh, you can still qualify if you're not going to be a dependent in 2010 and you take the credit on your 2010 taxes, which you'll pay by April uh, in 2011. So that's number one. Number two, you have to be a United States citizen and a taxpayer, and you have to buy property in the United States. You can't buy property outside the U.S., uh, and you can't be an illegal alien. You can be a resident alien, a permanent resident, uh, and qualify, but we imagine that most people are American citizens, and you have to pay taxes because it's a tax credit. You can't get a tax credit if you don't pay taxes. You can get a tax credit if you don't have a tax liability, but you have to be filing your taxes in order to claim the tax credit. Number three. The eligibility for the type of home that you can buy is very broad. You can buy any type of home. You can buy a single family, multifamily, you can buy a condo, a co-op, uh, you can buy a townhouse, uh, you can even buy uh, a fixed homes like a trailer uh, or a mobile home. The one exception being if it's a home that you drive around like a recreational vehicle, it might not qualify and it's a very fact intensive issue so you should absolutely talk to your accountant uh, and actually call the IRS about it because with regard to RVs it can become a little bit thorny. Uh, the only issue that comes up with um, when you're buying a um, uh, the kind of home you're buying is that if you're buying a multifamily home, remember you have to live in it. Any home you buy, if you want it to qualify for the home buyer tax credit, you have to actually live in the home. It can't be for investment. So if you bought a multifamily, it's fine. You just have to live in one of the units of the multifamily. Number four. Uh, you have to live in the home for three years. That's three calendar years from the date that you close. If you move out for any reason within those three years or you sell the property for any reason within the three years, you have to pay back the full credit. You don't get a prorated version of it, so if you stay for two out of the three years, you get to keep two-thirds of the credit. No. If you leave, meaning you move out, or you sell the property within three years of when you close, you got to pay the whole credit back to the IRS. The only exception is if you move because of uh, you're in the military or certain government personnel and you're forced to move more than 50 miles away from the home that you bought, uh, you can get an exemption from that. But for most people, three years you got to stay in the property. Number five of the eligibility requirements. You cannot buy a home from someone that you're directly related to. Now what does that mean? It means your grandparents, your great-grandparents all the way up the line, your parents, uh, your, uh, your wife, your kids, your grandkids. So you can buy from your brother, you can buy from your sister, but you can't buy from anyone up the lineal line of descendant or descendant. Uh, they won't let you buy from one of those people, also to prevent sham transactions involving a father selling to the son or things like that. Uh, number six of the eligibility requirements is you have to buy a home uh, that is $800,000 or less. Now, most people are going to buy a home in that price range. This is not a major restriction, but just so you know, if it's $801,000, you don't get a tax credit. You don't get a partial credit, you get nothing. 800000 and one cent, no tax credit, 800 or below, and you're fine. Number seven, you have to be in contract by April 30th, 2010. You have to be in contract by April 30th, 2010. 
A lot of people think, well, maybe they'll extend it again. This tax credit has been extended two or three times since, since it was originally announced in 2008. I would not depend on them extending it again. Let's treat April 30th as a hard deadline. Uh, if you go to homebuyertaxcredit.com, we have a countdown. You'll know exactly how many days left you have. But just remember, when you get to mid-April, late April, in a lot of places, there's a lot of things that have to happen for you to get into contract. If you leave it to the last minute, you could be in trouble. So make sure you move quickly. If you're looking to buy something, it is a great time to buy, uh, but you don't want to wait to the last minute because there's going to be a rush to get into contract at the end of April for people who are trying to claim the tax credit. Uh, number eight, you have to close by June 30th, 2010. So you, you have to be in contract by April 30th, you have to close by June 30th. That is a hard stop. If you close on July 1, if something delays you, you can't close. You're not, you're not going to get the tax credit. Uh, you have to close by June 30th. Now, note, as tough as it is to get into contract, when everybody's trying to get into contract, it's going to be even harder to close. There's a lot of moving parts in a real estate transaction between, if you're in an attorney state, there's the attorneys, there's title work, there's all the mortgage documents you need. There's a lot of things that are going to crop up which could delay you closing. So our advice to you is move quickly, be active, be very proactive with all the people that you have working with you to get you, in, in, uh, get you closed by June 30th. And, and boy, let everybody know you need to close by June 30th that you have a tax credit dependent on that to make sure they know what's at stake. So that's uh, the eighth criteria. Now we turn to the final two, which are the most complicated. Number nine has to do with your ownership history. And this determines whether you're going to be eligible as a first-time home buyer or as a long-time homeowner, otherwise known as a step-up buyer or a move-up buyer. So you're either a first-time home buyer, long-time homeowner. To be a first-time home buyer, you can't have owned a home within the last three years. It might be that you are not literally a first-time home buyer. You might have owned a home that you lived in years ago. As long as it wasn't within three years, meaning 36 months of the day that you close, then you're still a first-time home buyer, even though you owned before. It also doesn't mean that you can't own property. You could own a vacation home. You could own a second home. You could own an investment property that other people live in and pay you rent. That's fine. As long as within the last three years you have not lived in a home that you owned, you qualify as a first-time home buyer. What about the long-time homeowner? To qualify as a long-time homeowner, you have to have owned a home for five consecutive years out of the last eight. So you have to live in a home that you owned for five consecutive years out of the last eight. Now keep these, these things in mind. First, you don't need to live in that home now. You could have sold it a year ago, you could have sold it two years ago, as long as you lived in it for five consecutive years out of the last eight. Another big restriction. It has to be the same home. You can have lived in a home that you owned for two years and then another home for three years, add them up to five and qualify. It's got to be the same home. It's got to be the same home five consecutive years out of the last eight. Okay, then finally, we come to the income limitations, and these are also very restrictive. Uh, to qualify for a full tax credit, whether you're a first-time home buyer or a long-time homeowner, to qualify for a full tax credit, uh, you have to, your income has to be $125,000 or lower for a single taxpayer or uh, $225,000 or lower if you are a couple filing jointly. So $125,000 for, for a single, two twenty-five dollars for a couple. And if you make within $20,000 of those limitations, so you make up to $145,000 as a single or $245,000 as a couple, then you can qualify for what's called a partial tax credit. And the amount of your tax credit will depend on how far between 125 and 145 or 225 and 245 your income is. So if you're at 235 or 135, you're halfway into that range, you would get half the tax credit you would otherwise be entitled to. And of course, remember the tax credit is 10% uh, of the purchase price of your home, up to $8,000 for first-time home buyers, and up to, six, up to $6,500 for long-time homeowners. So that's the basic eligibility uh, requirements. Uh, if you think you might qualify under those requirements, then we really urge you to take a look at homebuyertaxcredit.com and check out the eligibility test. Uh, you can answer about a dozen questions, but it's much more extensive. Uh, there's actually about 60 potential questions you could, a uh, you could answer depending on the way you answered the previous one, and there's almost 100 potential in uh, outcomes depending on whether you're buying with someone else, whether you're married, whether you're a first-time or a long-time or you're 
income, all those different things. We've put it all into the test. It's a great way to find out if you're eligible and actually how much of a tax credit you would be entitled to. Well, thank you. We, thought you ho we, we hope you thought this was helpful. Uh, and of course, always before you make any of these major decisions, check with your accountant.